and grief boiling over in response to the death of 46-year-old George Floyd. His last moments caught on video. While being arrested, Floyd was held down by the knee of a Minneapolis police officer. His pleas for help unanswered. He died shortly after. The four officers involved were fired Wednesday. The Minneapolis police chief apologizing publicly Thursday. But Floyd's family is demanding further action. These guys need to be arrested, convicted of murder, and given the death penalty. They took my brother's life. Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry calling for criminal charges. The officer who had his knee on the neck of, of George Floyd should be charged, and I'm calling on Hennepin County attorney to do that. With city officials declaring racism an emergency and public health issue. Until we name this virus, this disease that has infected America for the past 400 years, we will never, ever resolve this issue. Frustration over the events spilling out into the streets. Officials and protesters alike calling for peace. If you out here and you're standing for George, then we have to stand for what he stood for, which was being peaceful. And action. In Minneapolis, I'm Nadia Romero reporting. And we'll talk about that this evening with uh, Richard Bell, a New York personal injury and civil rights attorney who joins us this evening. His website is 877calllaw.com. And to thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for inviting me, Jim. Please give me an overview of uh, of your thoughts about what happened and the Minneapolis response to date. Okay, first of all, um, this is just a heartbreaking tragedy. It's uh, it's just a chilling reminder of of the kind of injustice uh, we do have in America, unfortunately, and it's obviously devastating to Mr. Floyd's grieving family especially so to the African-American community, who unfortunately has historically been the victims of police brutality and inequality and injustice. And it should, and and I'm sure it is devastating to all Americans who believe in equality and fairness and justice. And I'll go along with every bit of that. I would uh, note one of the quotes from that uh, report we just heard, uh, Andrea Jenkins, the Uh, Minneapolis City Council Vice President, and I quote, until we name this virus, this disease that has infected America for the past 400 years, we'll never, ever resolve the issue. Uh, To me, that is hyperbole that goes way over the top. We are hardly the same as we were uh, a couple of centuries ago in this country. Uh, And I would go beyond that and even uh, uh, take note of the fact that uh, since the time that George Floyd was arrested and he died, that uh, there have undoubtedly been uh, thousands of people arrested in this country, many of them people of color, who have been, in fact, arrested peacefully and uh, uh, in compliance with the uh, law and uh, and basic tenets of morality. So I think we can, we can go a little bit overboard by suggesting that uh, everybody in the country, especially every cop, is a racist, which is, frankly, some of the implications that we've heard from time to time. Oh, Jim, that that would be that would be absolutely inaccurate and untrue and unfair. Uh, we obviously are focusing on bad policemen. The vast majority have the toughest job in the world, and they execute well every single day. So we have to be very fair and very careful with our words that we focus in on when there is injustice and not paint everything with a broad brush. Yeah. One thing that that I have noted in particular about this knee restraint, Uh, I've been hearing police officers in the media over and over saying, you know, we we can't use that. I mean, we don't use that anymore. We should never have used it. Uh, It is uh, a a method of restraint that is fraught with danger. It is very easy for people to die, and it's just a, a really wrong thing to do. And you have to wonder... Uh, if uh, people who graduate from the Minneapolis Police Academy don't have this uh, drilled into their heads, uh, at least I would hope uh, that this is very clear, because it was not only was it used, of course, as the video shows, but uh, the other officers on hand uh, did not seem to intervene. Like uh, you know, don't don't put your knee on his neck. Uh, nobody said anything. That, that's an excellent point because uh, obviously there is a duty to intervene when you uh, are a fellow police officer 
officer and you determine that someone's using unreasonable force. And your point about the, the, the knee procedure reminds me of the tragic case in New York of Eric Garner and the chokehold. And they did drum it into the officers at the academy and in and, and the police guidelines that the chokehold was no longer acceptable. And yet you saw that that horrible video and uh, Eric Garner yelling, uh, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And he dies at the hands of uh, that officer. So your point is very well taken. Uh, there's a lot of good training that's done, but obviously it's uh, not always executed upon. And, and something else that we should we should keep in mind, again, and we we can only judge from the, the video of what we see. We can't judge all that was said or anything. But th- there do cer- seem to be certain things that are rather clear, uh, that there, well, there wasn't uh, resistance taking place. And I understand uh, police when they face uh, resistance from a suspect, but as, as it would appear that George Floyd, he had been handcuffed. Uh, he seemed docile. And then there was this point when, uh, again, t- just to watch the video, I haven't heard the words that were involved, but uh, it, it did not seem as though any further action was justified, that he was subdued. Whatever the, the problem was with the, uh, the, uh, the arrest, that uh, it, it was accomplished, okay? He was in custody. He was under control. And, uh, you know, it would have been a little bit different if he'd been swinging punches or something, uh, although, uh, again still the, the, the knee restraint would not have been justified, nor would a, a chokehold, but at least it would have been more understandable. In this case, I honestly uh, don't understand it. No, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, Jim, and I looked at the three videos. They have the, obviously, the video we all saw at the beginning that looked like from a cell phone. There's the surveillance video, and then the body cam video came out, and I, I would agree with your assessment. So to understand it from a legal point of view, when you're looking at excessive force, whether it's in the criminal case or the, or the civil cases like I do in the civil rights uh, area, it means force that exceeds the level that's reasonably necessary to accomplish the purpose. So in this purpose, it's it's obviously uh, to, to, at that point, uh, control him or restrain him, although he doesn't seem to be resisting in any way, shape, or form. And usually in these cases, when the defense is there was a justification, some of the types of justifications are if the officer had an immediate threat to his life or the life of others around or the, the – uh, a suspect was trying to escape. We, we don't see any of that here, at least from what we've seen at this point. one 866 jimbo is our number, one 866 And we seem to go through this periodically, and uh, there's a great furor and uh, sometimes public demonstrations, sometimes property damage and even further uh, injuries, and then uh, it all seems to sort of go away. We'll come back. We'll talk with uh, Richard Bell some more about that. Again, he is a New York personal injury and civil rights attorney, and we'll look at the what now aspect of the George Floyd case. Back on the Jim Bohannon Show in a moment. Back to Jimbo Hanna Show at one 866 jimbo We're talking about the George Floyd case, where, by the way, the, uh, the National Guard has now been called out by Minnesota Governor Tim Walz uh, to uh, Minneapolis. We're talking with Richard Bell, a New York City personal injury and civil rights attorney. And as we take some calls for our guest, uh, let's look at the options available. The, the mayor of Minneapolis is now calling for criminal charges. Uh, and, of course, there there is the, the civil route. As uh, an attorney, what uh, would you uh, say are the options for the Floyd family? Okay, so for the Floyd family, obviously the criminal actions that are being considered by both the state and the federal government, those, of course, are up to the prosecutors. Um, and, obviously, there's the administrative action against the police who were fired, and they made appeal that. In terms of the family, the grieving family right now, their only personal recourse is a civil rights and wrongful death action. What does that mean? That means that they sue for both a violation of Mr. Floyd's civil rights, which means there's a specific section in the federal law, Section 1983, that says if you've been deprived of a constitutional right, and here that would be the Fourth Amendment right uh, 
who uh, not have unreasonable uh, search and seizure, seizure meaning being restrained physically here, um, and have to prove that the officer's actions were uh, certainly excessive force. That would be the civil rights part of the action. Then there would be the wrongful death and pain and suffering part of the action that's uh, based on, once again, on the excessive force and obviously the battery and, and eventual death here. Mm -hmm. So that's what would be the family personal option, and that's for money damages, and depending on the state and the jurisdiction, it might be punitive damages, meaning damages to punish the officers in the police department because it was so egregious. Let's take a call from Tim in Farmington, Missouri. Hello, Tim. All right. Hello. Good evening. What's on your mind? Hey, I'm a retired correction supervisor, and we were always taught that once you have the suspect or the offender under control, cuffed, that that ends the use of force. And I watched this video, and this was excessive use of force. Yeah, that seems to be pretty much the consensus, uh, Mr. Bell. Yes, t uh, uh, Tim, certainly uh, uh, from your perspective, and I think based on what we've seen so far, of course, uh, from this video, any objective, reasonable person would have to say that. Yeah, uh, but we appreciate both your thoughts and your listenership, but also your service to your community. Thank you, Tim. In Longview,